What we want to do here is derive a formula for simple exponential growth. And one of the best ways to do that is just to think about a bank account. Let's think about an account that yields R% percent interest. We won't use any numbers, just symbols. And the initial amount we invest is called A0, A0. sub zero. And we'll take a look at how much money we have in that account every year. So we'll start by making ourselves a little table we'll to keep track of the time in years and the amount. And we'll start with an initial amount um, at year zero of A naught. So at the very beginning, year zero, there's no interest. Our money hasn't sat there long enough to earn anything. But at the end of the first year, year one, what we have in there is our original amount, that hasn't gone anywhere, but we add on the interest rate multiplied by that amount. So R times A naught is how much money we've earned this year, how much interest we've earned. And you can see that we can factor out the A naught, so we can just call that A naught times quantity one plus R. And what I'm gonna do is put an exponent of one on there. All right, the end of year two. Well, I began year two with A naught times one plus R in the account. That's what I ended the last year with. And now I add on R times that amount, so a percentage of that amount. And this is the beauty of compound interest. We're taking interest on not only on our principal amount, but on the interest that we earned last year. Now notice that each one of these terms has an A naught times one plus R uh, factor in it. So I can take that factor out and see that that multiplies one plus R, which is just A naught times one plus R squared. So you can see why I put the one exponent on that last one plus R binomial. All right, let's go to the end of year three. We started the year with a naught times one plus r squared, and we're gonna earn r times that. And if we look at that, we have a factor of a naught times one plus r squared in each term, which we can factor out, multiply by one plus r, and so we get a naught times one plus r cubed. And it's not hard to imagine that we could just continue that process on and on over the years, and we would end up with a formula for simple growth, which looks like this. And this formula for simple growth will help us solve a whole variety of problems that involve exponential growth and exponential decay.